the 37th book of the A Science Fiction Special Series 1, the second last one, The Midnight Dancers by Gerard F. Conway, 1971. The cover is by Davis Meltzer. If the name Gerard F. Conway doesn't ring a bell, try Jerry Conway. Yes, this is the amazing teen who started a run of writing for Marvel and DC Comics. He took over for Stan Lee on The Amazing Spider-Man. One of his famous storylines was the death of Gwen Stacy. He also created The Punisher. At the age of 19, while already working at Marvel, he submitted this novel to Terry Carr. I think he used the name Gerard F. Conway just to put a little distance between himself and his comic book writing. Terry Carr had been moving the Ace Science Fiction Specials line into publishing first novels. This was no comic book script. A young man has become the hunt master of his tribe. His woman, whom he doesn't love, has been kidnapped by an evil creature. More out of pride than love, he gathers young men with him and travels tracking down this creature to rescue his wife. Conway is a young man writing about a young man striving to find his way and who he is. While there is some sword and planet style action in this novel, it is primarily a journey and a journey of doubt, mistrust, betrayal, and love. Let's take a look at the book for some examples of how Conway is beyond his age in writing. Saul, the hunt master, and his men have just killed a beast. This beast had been terrorizing a village and it had threatened them in their journey. Saul expects to be treated well in the village, but an old man, though smiling, doesn't look at him kindly. It says on page 149, His eyes didn't like me though he smiled, blandly and taut-cheeked. "'What's wrong, old man?' "'Nothing, nothing,' he said. I prodded him more deeply, and he admitted that he was curious what a tribe-killer looked like. "'What do you mean?' He said that I'd killed their tribe. I left them with nothing to fear. I'd taken away their reason for hope. I'd killed them. Old man, I said, that's insane. No, he said, shaking his head stubbornly. You can't have hope without despair. You can't be free from fear without something to give that fear to. Conway was exploring things far beyond his ears. And then on page 202, we have some reflections from the Midnight Dancers themselves, the Fates. It says, Now I see my father, a lonely man who needs me, and I see myself, too quick to judge the acts he does as discipline, as acts he does to hurt me. My pride grows as I turn from my father. I will not face him as my father, as I will not face myself. I cut him over and over deeply. Knowing this now makes me cry. The memories come more and more, deeper and deeper, harder and harder. I see myself as Saul the petty fool, Saul who couldn't love his wife because he was asked to, because it was demanded of him, Saul, the man who bleeds inside himself, who loves his friends deeply and fully, who cannot face that love or face himself. I beg for it to end, but it doesn't. It goes on. You see, Saul, the woven pattern is delicate and intricate. For all its complexity, though, it is somewhat subtle, is it not? Your pride has destroyed you, Saul. If you'd come here out of love for a lost woman, perhaps you would have had a bulwark of strength to resist us with, the strength you can gain only from being part of another. You are only yourself. Your life proves it. Therefore, you must fall. Conway seems to be exploring meaning in life. His coming of age is a deep philosophical one. There's only this one printing of The Midnight Dancers, and that's a shame. It's not a great novel, 
It's an okay novel. It is an insight into the 19-year-old Jerry Conway. His influence in comics and TV is undeniable. I give The Midnight Dancers 6 out of 10. So I'm very curious to see if there's anyone out there who has actually read this novel. How about Jerry Conway's comic book work? Perhaps the Spider-Man run after he took over from Stan Lee. Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep reading.